Thank you very much. This is Mr. Miles Hunt. We're going to play a song together, and I'm going to fuck off. <laughs> Thank you very much. At this point, I just looked like to say 
Thank you, Erica and Miles and Graham for the tour. Love you all. Have a good show. Give it up one more time for Wayne Hussey, eh? To close, you don't have to have it up for me. Tell me I love you. Where to just to be with me? Cause I've been a long term disappointment to myself. It hits like a hammer when I'm mad to someone else. The circle doesn't fit its little squad. Bulges with opportunity. Oh, yeah. yeah, I said, is that a smile that hangs beneath your nose? All right, all right, so why they pulled your mouth into that fucked up pose? You don't have to have it up on me. Tell me I love you. Where to just to be with me? Disappointment to myself It hits like a hammer When I'm mad to someone else And the circle doesn't fit This little score Bulges with opportunity Opportunity, bulges. Yeah, I've been a long term disappointment to myself. It's like a hammer when I'm mad to someone else, and the circle doesn't fit its little score. Bulges with opportunity, bulges. This is, uh, we're, we're right at the end now of uh, the US tour with Wayne Hussey. That's getting better, there's S's and T's now. Um. Uh, Erica and I have actually been on an acoustic tour since uh, April the 19th, 2007. Uh, feels like it's never ending. Little bits of it end, you know, but uh, we're already booked like way through into next spring doing more of these acoustic shows around England and uh, Scotland and Wales. But uh, the reason we started doing this acoustic tour uh, last year was because uh, Malk Trees, who's the Wonderstuff's guitarist, he became a father for the first time last January. <coughs> and uh, rather generously, the rest of the band said to Malk, take the rest of the year off, Malk, and go and learn how to be dad. 
which is incredibly generous of us. And then we suddenly saw, thought to us, well, what the fuck are we going to do with the rest of the year? So myself and Erica wrote some songs, and we wrote uh, the Wonder Stuff's drummer, Andres Carew, into helping us out. And we made an album. Hooray for Andres Carew. And uh, the three of us made an album called Not An Exit, which happens to be on sale somewhere in the room this evening, along with a very fine Wayne Hussey souvenir to remember such a special evening by. Um, so that's when we started doing the touring acoustically. And uh, as I say, there's no end in sight. So with or without your permission, we're going to play some tunes from this album, Not An Exit. This is a real family sing-along orientated song. You might want to remember the chorus and bring it out at the dinner table at Thanksgiving or something along those lines. It's called Back on the Charm Offensive. <laughs> album that Erica and I have made is that I finally got round to writing my first genuine love song. Now, uh, I've written plenty of sub so songs on the subject of amour. Probably not as many as Wayne Hussey, who's up there with Barry White in my book, I think. <laughs> I I've written, like I say, many love songs, but uh, they always end up being breakup songs because I've been kind of prolific in that area. So this, is, uh, this next song is my genuinely first ever love song, unless you count verse three of It's Your Money, I'm After Baby, where I'm in love with myself and nobody else. But, uh, anyway, uh, you're right there. Okay. All right, it's called Corny But True.
can the shoes of more without you? Cause we're a lot of like in many ways, but as separate as I'm a stains, it's just better when I'm. song that um, I wrote or we all wrote for this record was um, was from a poem that I'd been writing for a couple of years I, I wanted to send a message to my former 22 year old self from my now 42 year old self and I basically wanted to say to that kid you know relax a little bit enjoy your fucking music and stop being such a prick because uh, it turns out okay in the end I'm the living proof so I wrote it as a poem and latterly, Erica and I were working on a piece of music in the studio. <coughs> and I thought that this poem would fit perfectly as a melody over the piece of music. So what I'd foolishly never done is actually sung the song out loud. I just sat and listened to the music and imagined that the words fit. So the day came when I had to record the vocal for the record. And I discovered the schoolboy error that I'd made was that I'd left no room to breathe whilst delivering these wonderful lyrics. And you'd think after 25 years of songwriting, I'd kind of consider those kind of things. Well, um, we did what pretty much everyone else does in the studio these days with computers, and we just cheated the vocal in line by line. But when we finished the album, both Erica and I agreed that one of our favorite tracks on the album was this song, and you know we needed to play it live at the gigs. So we did the most obvious thing, which was to slow the song down, so I could remember where to breathe and remember the lyrics. But it sounded fucking awful. So then I hit upon the idea, much like Wayne Hussey's got here. I too, when I'm playing acoustic shows at home, I have a, a low budget Axl Rose auto cue type thing going on here for this particular song. So if I think about the breathing, I can look at the lyrics too, so I don't forget them. Anyway, tonight on the way here, or this afternoon on the way here, I was so full of confidence in the fact that I was coming back to New Jersey to play that I have cast away my lyrics. All right? So watch in sheer fucking disappointment <laughs> as you question yourselves, why on earth would you pay your hard-earned cash to see at least one performer on the stage that's openly admitting I'm gonna fuck the next song up? Right. 
But them are, as they say, the breaks. It's called Note to Self. Sneaking down something I never could work out Like who said so and why it count Meet the measure of the mob to have success and do the job Exactly as expected that but those that judge but never have Put their asses on the line but always seem to have the time Question what it is in mind but still they will not realize Sentiments remain the same, there's no time to be afraid Do it now and don't complain but still they keep asking And I can tell them what it's all about but they keep asking And I can tell them what it's all about But it's nothing that they can't work out themselves So far, so good Sometimes I want to wreck the joint, but that would just confuse the point. I came to build, not knock it down to blister as not wear a crown. Easily distracted by most everything, I'm mystified. Encouragement to criticize, I'll oh, fuck it. Buy a house and rent it out, collect your stock and wait for gout. Or make a mic that I was here and raise your glass year after year. Sentiments remain the same, there's no time to be afraid. Do it now and don't complain, but still, they keep asking. I can tell them what it's all about, but they keep asking. And I can tell them what it's all about, but they keep asking. And I can tell them what it's all about, but it's nothing that they can't work out They keep asking And I can tell them what it's all about But they keep asking And I can tell them what it's all about But they keep asking, asking, asking And I can tell them what it's all about But they keep asking And I can tell them what it's all about But it's nothing In lieu of fucking that song up in public for the hundredth time, I think I should try and do something that I know. Actually, before we do it, um, one of the little adventures we had on this tour was driving down from uh, Portland, Oregon, towards San Francisco at 70 mile an hour in the overtaking lane whilst we were overtaking a great big semi and we blew out the front passenger side uh, tire. Well, Wayne Hussey was uh, at the wheel, and as you might imagine from a man with such ever-present cool, he took us safely to the side of the road. However, I will never be able to play this song, either acoustically or with the Wonder Stuff, ever again without thinking about the day that Wayne Hussey saved our lives. It's called Mission Drive. <laughs> Mission drive is to open up my eyes, and I don't care who wants to stare these days to realize 
to be brought back down to size The wicked lies and all the shite you say And I don't care who wants to stare these days So right before we came out on this uh, US tour, uh, the Wonder Stuff were playing in a town in the Midlands of England called Derby. And uh, between the ages of three and seven, I lived in Derby. So this is a memory that goes back to 1974. And it was a morning like most others, where my mom or my dad would come and wake my brother and I up and say, Come on downstairs, comb your hair, clean your teeth, shine your shoes and get ready for school. But what made it a morning not like any other was mom said, when you walk through the lounge, be very careful on what you tread. 
For there were five of the hairiest men I'd ever seen in my life, laying under a mixture of sleeping bags and car blankets all over our living room floor in front of the fireplace. And a closer inspection, I discovered that these five of the hairiest men I'd ever seen were none other than five members of the British glam rock band, Wizard. Because my Uncle Bill used to play keyboards in Wizard. And I think what had happened was they played in town and five of them decided to save some of their hotel money by coming and staying at our house. But the reason it stuck in my head was I got into the kitchen to eat my cornflakes, shine my shoes and clean my teeth and get ready for school and watch my mom and dad do similarly while they were getting ready to go to work. And even at such a young and tender age, I was very aware how early it was and how it seemed to me that those five hairy men had no intention of getting off our floor and emitting those amazing pungent smells that I would later come discover are simply a healthy man with a hangover. But they weren't going to get off that floor before midday. And it was at that very moment I truly understood what it was to be a musician. So there were my forks in the road. And I don't have to explain to you which one it was that I took. So look like my city These people used to talk to me But now I'm cutting My shadow I am cutting My shadow Offer me to bait and I take it Offer me to cake and I bake it Usually I try to fake it These days I don't try to face it I for me to bait and I take it I for me to cake and I bake it Generally I try to fake it But these days I don't try to face it Cut My shadow I am cutting My However, I'm 25 years into being a so-called professional musician now. And I think I believed when I was a teenager, by the time I was 42, if I was still rocking, then surely I would be living some, I don't know, Ozzy Osbourne-esque <laughs> life of indulgence in the Hollywood Hills. But I guess the gods didn't have that in my plans for me. Thank fuck. So it's a good job I still enjoy coming out and playing to people like you in places like this. Everything worked out just fine. If it's not enough, I gave my blood, my sweat, my tears, and all I said I would. If it's not enough, I gave my blood, my sweat, my Tears and all I said I
Thanks very much. There was, a, there was a very kind gentleman spoke to me before we got up to play, and he said he would do me a trade. He'd buy me a drink if I'd listen to one of his boring fan stories, all right? It's not that boring. Well, we haven't fucking heard it yet. Actually, you can get up and tell it to everybody else if you like, but I'll tell you what, that drink, that drink could go down a treat right fucking now. I'm parched. Uh, Jack Daniels Malibu and Coke would be great, please. Yeah, it's, it's actually, that's a cocktail that Erica made up on tour. Erica, is that for real? Yes, yeah, Jack, Jack Daniels, Malibu and Coke, and it's the JMC, the Jesus and Mary chain is the name of that cocktail, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, okay, yeah. Play your song. Um, I do uh, one more, I think, from, uh, from the Not An Exit album. And I, I wrote the lyrics to this song when I was just having a pretty shitty day at home, walking around with my arse cheeks firmly clasped in my hands. And it occurred to me that something that could lift my mood that day would be a complete stranger turning up on my front door with a freshly baked cake in hand with my name on it. This has actually happened recently, but only prompted by me talking about it on stage. And fortuitously, it happened on Erica's birthday, which is just a couple of days before we left home. And, yeah, which feels like years ago. But uh, on tour, while well, I've been on this tour, and in the UK, people have been turning up at shows with cakes for us. Not this evening, I notice, you bunch of stingy cunts. But, uh, no. But there was a funny night. We were, we were in Boston right at the beginning of this tour. And a husband and wife came and, and they'd made this most beautiful vanilla and uh, strawberry cake. And uh, three o'clock in the morning after the show, there was myself, Erica, Wayne Hussey, our tour manager, Graham, all stay <laughs> sitting on a bed in a, in a Super 8 motel in Boston, gorging on this cake. And I, it immediately reminded me of like 18 years ago with the Wonder Stuff and the mission on a tour of the US. And me and Wayne used to stay up in hotel rooms till three, four in the morning back then, but I tell you, it wasn't fucking cakes we were gorging on. <laughs> anyway, I've digressed. Oh, and here come the drinks. God bless you. Steve, thanks to Steve. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. And props to the barkeep, that's perfect. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I was talking about this song, The Cake. Fuck it, I'll just, we'll just play it. Um, I've sort of told you the story of the lyrics. It's nothing about staying up like that. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's pointless kind of playing it. However, it has kind of a nifty chorus. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to insist, as this is the last night of the US tour, that when we drop the third chorus, you've got to start singing along. It doesn't work in California, they've all got their fucking shades on in the, in, in the night there, so they're, they're not in a sing-along mood. I think we managed to pull off a sing-along in El Paso, didn't we? Yeah. Oh, as, was El Paso so awful that I'd imagined that it was a good night? Probably. Uh, I'll, I'll clue you in on the sing-along bit, it's a fucking good chorus. Right? And then the other reason we should play it is it's a fantastic violin solo on uh, Erica's part. So. This is called The Cake. 
I thought at first it'd been a mistake When a caller dropped me off a cake And told me that there's cause for celebration I said, mate, you've got the wrong address I'm living with a world of stress Remove your cake and all its connotations But he took me squarely in his eyes Said, have you ever wondered why Your constitution is sunk below compare a cake, my friend, will make amends for your disappointment or your loss of friends. The one I bring has been me with so much care. Said I, me oh my. A sense of humor is usually required. Said I, me oh my. A sense of humor is usually required. With that I thought I could hear no more So I took the cake, shut the door And placed it at the center of my table Well before too long my sunken heart came up for air Sent a spark into my head It was then that I felt able To consider it being so kind to think of me In these worst of times How could I repay them in due course? Well, I'll take a slice, wrap up the rest, and send it to someone at best. Cause luck was worse than mine, but about to change. I said, I, me, oh my. A sense of humor is usually required. I said, I, oh me, oh my. A sense of humor is usually required. To occupy the thoughts of one that holds you dearly as a son Cannot be taken lightly or undone That a simple gesture such as this could raise you up And clear the mist so it'll never be forgotten or dismissed There's a sing-along bit Said I, me oh my Said I, oh me oh my, a sense of humor is usually required. Said I, oh me oh my, a sense of humor is usually required. Well, uh, that's the first time anyone's actually done a sing-along in, in the States. And it had me feeling all sort of, I don't know, Robbie Williams-ish. Which, of course, I hated. Mm. Right, okay, well, my acoustic performances, as uh, many of you will bear testament to, basically started here in New Jersey uh, with the help of two very special friends of mine, David Smith and Indian from Gig Records. Uh, indeed. When did you start the label, Dave? What year was that? He's outside having a fag, isn't he? Cunt doesn't even smoke. What year was it? 98. So in 1998, me and Dave were already in touch. We knew each other from Wonder Stuff Touring. And David said, uh, you know, he was starting a record label with his good friend, Indian, who I hadn't met at that point. And... Uh, between myself and Maltrees, Dave and Indian, we put a tour together and uh, made a record and then made another record and made another record. And of course, one of them was, uh, by the time we get to Jersey, being New Jersey, which was recorded in uh, Red Bank, which I believe is only a hop, skip and a jump down the road. So it has a 
special place in my chest does New Jersey and uh, spent a lot of time here. And um, heartburn, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but the first tour that, w that we went out on, um, we were a ramshackle little gang at the time and, and me and Malk had rehearsed up a couple of songs and we had this uh, desire and belief that the two of us could get around America on Greyhound buses and uh, trains and shit and, and do this like 35 day tour that um, Indian and David sorted out for us. Anyway, I think we went up to Boston for one show on a Greyhound bus, hated it, and said, we've got to get a vehicle, and one of you's got to drive us. So poor Dave got talked into driving me and Malk all around the States. Uh, as it turned out, we had a fucking good time, and we did it again some months later. But this, I don't know whether it was the first or the second time that we actually did the whole coast to coast and up into Canada tour, uh, doing the acoustic thing with Dave at the wheel. Um, we were basically living in a, was it a Lincoln Town car or something? I don't know, we hired a car and we were living in the fucking thing, three of us with guitars and all our luggage and stuff. And so, as you can imagine, it didn't take long before we grew to hate each other. <laughs> and, uh, it was during this period, I think, when I had unfair thoughts towards my travelling companions that uh, I wrote this song. And it's called I'd Hate to Find You Amongst the Old Reliable. And it goes out to my very good friend, David Smith. If I walk through you like you just walked through me, the barren of souls would be unnecessary And if I looked at you like the ones you throw me You'd follow the way to hold against me Enough is enough, but it's never too much The life of the confessor is no open book Enough is enough, but it's never too much The life of the confessor is no open book Now the life of the confessor is no I'd hate to find you Amongst the old reliables I'd hate to find It's the mark of success that we shared more or less Made it harder to take when our faces turned sour From the time that we talked in the line we don't walk You're just about the fastest way to spend an hour Enough is enough, but it's never too much the life of the confessor is no open book Enough is enough, but it's never too much The life of the confessor is no open book Now the life of the confessor is no I'd hate to find you amongst the old reliable You never let on and I can't read your mind You must have seen me from the far and in better times I didn't push it cause I knew it would come apart I know that I blew it but 
That middle's a kind of start Enough is enough But it's never too much The life of this confessor Is an open book Enough is enough But it's never too much The life of the confessor Is an open book Now the life of the confessor Is She said, confused you will be. He's got the car on the lawn and he's using the horn again. I know that she will be. Cartoon boyfriend, where you gonna rub yourself out? Cartoon boyfriend, when you gonna rub yourself out? There's a girl at the store and she's begging for more. He said, Abused you will be. If you touch her hair on my head, then you'd be better off dead. She said, Nah, joking, you must be. Cartoon boyfriend, when you gonna rub yourself out? Cartoon Cartoon boyfriend, when you gotta rub yourself out. There was a piece of gold in his mouth when they met. Now there's just pieces of gold. There was a thought in his head, the first time that she said, But now there's just a gaping hole.
That's very much. Actually, it's not only my, uh, my acoustic period that, uh, that the United States has been very important. It was very important in, uh, in the Wonder Stuff's musical growth. And I reflect upon a time of uh, the Wonder Stuff's first ever North American tour. Now, I've got to share a little uh, something about the Wonder Stuff with you. We all, the four original members, we all despised each other's taste in music and latterly became to despise each other as well. Um, anyway, but uh, on those early tours, what we used to do on the tour bus, because we were kids back then and we felt like you had to have music on all, all the time, was we used to uh, only play music on the tour buses that we all hated, <laughs> right? So th this was something we could agree upon. So you'd, you'd have the bass thing, God rest his soul, you'd have him playing, uh, I don't know, Megadeth or fucking Bomb Disneyland. <laughs> it, it was just a fucking row as far as I was concerned. Maltrese was playing all these bullshit West Coast hippie bollocks, like, I don't know, fucking, well, as far as I was concerned, that's what R.E.M. were, anyway. Uh, I think I was going through my Joni Mitchell, Leonard Cohen period, so <laughs> obviously everybody hated me. Um, so what we would do was play records, because we wanted music on, that we all agreed that we all hated. So we used to have things on, like, Madonna's Greatest Hits. Uh, Belinda Carlisle's uh, album with Circle in the Sand and, uh, and all that type of stuff. Which actually I came to love. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember very shortly before Martin Jokes died, uh, we, we were still uh, rehearsing with the wonder stuff. I said, is it now, is now the time to do a cover, a cover version of Heaven is a Place on Earth? And uh, <laughs> he still didn't think so to the day he died. But, uh, but anyway. Um, there was a day uh, on one of these, on, on these tours, and we were in the south somewhere, and we pulled into a truck stop, having just had a raising, rousing chorus of Like a Virgin again. And, uh, and I found this uh, CD, well, it was probably a cassette actually then, 89, in a truck stop called 20 Trucking Favourites. <laughs> right? And I thought to myself, we're all fucking gonna hate this, this is perfect. So it had, you know, uh, Six Days on the Road, uh, Bertha, the Truck Driver's Queen, uh, Giddy Up Go, anyway, I could, I could go on. Uh, but we took it on the bus and we all fell in love with this, this tape, right? To the point that ever since that day, and still to this day, although it's on an iPod now, I've had that thing with me every tour I've ever done. America, Europe, a lot, right? And I fucking love it. So when we finished that particular tour, when we first got this tape, we were going back to England to record the Wonder Stuff's second album, Hop. And uh, I think the first day we got back, we recorded Don't Let Me Down Gently, and the first few days went very well. And then we discovered we'd only written three or four songs. Uh, and uh, our producer, Pat Collier, was very unhappy with us and said, well, what else you got? And we'd got this demo of a song um, that we'll play for you now. And um, basically what it was, it was another reworking of Astley and the Noose, it, uh, which is another old Wonder Stuff song. And it was shit, and it had a terrible chorus. But I think me and Bob sat together, and we'd hired in a banjo just to muck about with. And we agreed that if we trucked up this song, <laughs> sort of get, get close to sort of very cheesy, bad bluegrass, that this one particular idea that we had would work. And uh, I think we were right. Because <laughs> this is what we got. It's called Golden Green. She's golden, but she's green at all the things that I have seen and all the items I'm hoarding up the back stairs. Give them to me, give them now. Shut it up, you silly cow. How could you say that, even think that out? With these words are not my own, they only come when I'm alone. She is loved and she is welcome in my home. With these words are not my own, they only come when I'm alone. She is loved and she is welcome in my home. She's taken all my vitamins, used up my line of fuel. I'm sure she stole all of my pencil lead in school. 
How don't slap, I'll give it back But woman, it's not the lack of my possessions That is making me feel cruel But these words are not my own They only come when I'm alone She's loved and she is welcome in my home well, these words are not my own, they only come when I'm alone. She's loved and she is welcome in my home. Yeah! She said that she loves me Lions would shine in her eyes And if she loves me She said that she loves me Even lions would shine in her eyes Now these words are not my own They only come when I'm alone She's loved and she is welcome in my home When these words are not my She's loved and she is welcome in my home. Erica, take it away! There was, there was no mention of trucks, but uh, I think we got the rest of the job done. Um, is Wayne still in the room? Is Wayne with us? Uh, oh, Wayne, next song, next song. Oh, fuck it, come up now, eh? Right? Yeah. Like, back to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Wayne Hussey. Come on. difficult on the rest of the tour. <laughs> now we've had a fucking great time here in the States uh, for the last month. And uh, I think I've been, for all of, all four of us, because Graham, our tour manager's with us, um, we hope to get, do it again very soon. So uh, thanks a lot for having us and it's been uh, great to see you. Cheers. <laughs> words stick them in your head narrow them round until you can't forget what's in take this time to lie about everything about it This happened to me And what happened to everyone And don't give in It will repeat it Will repeat it Well, I said 
Seconds out Do you want to know what this fight's been about? It's commerciality over at Conwood Out We're like a Smoking. <laughs> <laughs> 